Well, that's the, that's the thing. This is the nuance of Lord of the Rings. A lot of people consider it a very simple story, but like I feel like a lot of this is telling us like very good people can have flaws that can lead to very dark paths if they're not, you know, stalwart sort of thing. But there's always a way back. That sort of stuff. But it cannot stay in the Shire. No. No, it can't. You must leave and leave quickly. I'll be waiting for you at the inn of the Prancing Pony. Hobbits really are amazing creatures. And that's what Tolkien was on about. I mean, you know, World War I tore people away from where they lived their whole lives mm. and sent them to, basically sent them to hell, sent them to Mordor. Confounded <laughs> old Samwise Gamgee! Have you been eavesdropping? I haven't dropped no eaves, to be honest. And throughout history, that's why people used to, you know, the peasants used to join the Lord's army and whatever, because that mm -hmm. was their chance to go somewhere. Rip them all down. Rip them all down. Destroying nature. I know, obvious, but still something I just want to acknowledge is like the soundtrack reflects like the naturalistic sort of elements with the Shire and then with the, the bad guys very much clanking metal. Isengard obviously that, uh, represents that as like an industrial version yeah. of, of Well, and, and some of world. it is like them actually using chains. It's got that tin, 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 yeah. tin, tin, before like the brass comes in, and that's like all. Oh. That's seriously, that's like one of the biggest core elements of all of Lord of the Rings. I think is that we should work together. I'm all right. I'm not hurt. Over go. and over, they show them working together and watching out for each other. Even when Gandalf was illuminating off the side of the cliff, which I shouldn't be doing if you're trying to lay low. Even as like as Mary like starts to peer over the edge, Pippin like kind of holds his yeah. chest, like don't fall. Just like little all the little things like that that show that they're watching out for each other. Mary and Pippin are such lads. Oh yeah. Over here! This way! It's working! I know it's working! Run! This, this is what I mean. Yeah, this, this moment here where there's like they know they're leading these guys to their deaths. Barmia's sacrifice is built on another two different characters' this choice to sacrifice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gives him his chance. It's all about that teamwork. The old world will burn in the fires of industry. This is the, the essence of what Tolkien despised. Just the wanton yep. destruction of the natural environment. Oh, like, it's so perfectly everything captured. Everything gets brushed under the wheels of, of this, factories and the just small, endless the consumption. Gray, the dirt, the smoke, and it's just all covered up. There's no more greens. They're all getting There's fucking annihilated. There's nothing living. I was just gonna say, I like this scene though, like the, the soldiers just going through it, just picking out lads who look yeah. like roughly big enough you, to swing a sword. Like you're you coming your... with us and you're probably gonna die. But it, it's it's a great like representation of, I guess, the practicalities of uh, life back then. If you were a, a lad of like at least 14, 15, you're probably gonna have to go to war. Like if body, the shit happens. Yeah, yeah. all the men here as well, signaling the desperation of this situation that they need everybody that they can get. One of the yes. parts that I definitely remembered, even as a kid, because I was like, "Oh no, everyone's gonna die." But they they don't all die, so that's nice. That's right, they don't all die. I argue this speech applies to a hell of a lot more than what he's talking about in the vein of uh, the creative arts having been crushed. It I mean, you know, I say this as if you haven't done that with a lot of your videos, Gary, like this. Uh, yeah, I put this in as much as I can because it's uh, very applicable. A lot is being said. Yes. Yeah, well, they're a bunch of jerks, sir. How did it come to this? I ask well, myself that every day. It's great to watch films like this, though, every once in a while and remind ourselves, like, this is what movies can do for you. Like, yeah, you didn't gaslight you yourself. Like... You didn't just become cynical. You didn't just decide, I don't like films anymore. It's like, no, 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 the ones you were watching before were really fucking good. Yep. Your favorites yeah, are really a, fucking good. There was definitely a process to get where we are today. You're saying it took a while? It took a minute. It also feels deliberate giving the um, bad guys crossbows. More mechanical, right? Yeah, it's more industrial. Yeah, more mechanical. mechanical. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, even small bits like that I always quite like. There's so many of them are not ready to go toe to toe with one of those fuckers. Like they're so no. vicious. And then that door oh. open and yeah, the door. Yeah, give us why. You really get the impression of like this is the, the the new world versus the old. Like they are not equipped to deal with this kind of siege warfare. Like the new 
um, the blo- the the gunpowder, yep. um, these like spring powers, um, all this stuff that like just overcomes all their defenses. It is likely that we go to our doom. I love that. This like, attitude permeates so much of um, the story. Like this could be the last time we do this. We're gonna risk everything on this one last assault, but fuck it, we're gonna do it anyway because it's the it's the right thing to do. Angry trees. Well, the allegory is yeah, getting pretty not expecting over this. it now. <laughs> yeah. Nature's like fuck Nature's you. Oh, no, there's a guy who catches on fire. It does make me laugh when the the waters like yeah. flood Isengard. You just see him dunking his head. <laughs> yeah, the first thing he does is dive in. <laughs> <laughs> Zorwin wakes up, he's like, what the fuck is all that noise outside? There we go. But sometimes you didn't want to know the end. Because how could the end be happy? What do I mean? Why, Lord of the Rings doesn't even do... Why do to me, Sam? Lord of the Rings doesn't do a strictly, like, 100% happy ending. No, no it doesn't. It's, it's like, a there's, no, call no. there's a cost. There's a cost to any yep. victory. Even darkness must pass. A new day will come. And that cost isn't always immediately obvious. No, what this movie pull, uh, what the books pull off is you've got your little MacGuffin, you've got a ring, and you think it's the easiest thing. It's just, a, they even mention it within the book. It's it's a little thing. This little thing is so destructive and so hard to get rid of and so manipulative, and everything has weight and gravity to it, and uh, that's the verisimilitude, I'll use RMB's term, that works for this film is when they grounded it, what their approach to it was, we want to make this historical. This, we're, not, we're not making a fantasy, we're making a historical biopic those were the stories that stayed with you that meant something even if you were too small to understand why i think it kind of worked uh you, you can say that i think i think they did okay with it yeah, there it is. This is that moment when you, you're joking with friends, but you're actually serious. Yeah. Which, I mean, it's just what an effective way of demonstrating just how toxic and corrosive the ring is. How quickly it can happen. We're out fishing, and now they're fighting each other to the death. That's not a good but thing. But we're still clawing for it as well. Yeah. Ugh. Must be getting near tea time, so as it would be in decent places. We're not in decent places. We're not in decent places. I don't think I'll be coming back. In a way, you will not. We're going there and back again, just like Mr. Bilbo. You'll see. But I mean, yeah, it's a nice reassurance, but I mean, you know, Frodo's right. It's There's like, just a lot going a... on, and, and it's like Leia 1 is, you know, just a general worry. It's like, Willie, then Leia 2 is like, he did. Yeah, of course, the Leia down is, sure, you can physically come back. You can go back to the Shire physically after surviving your journey but the journey exacts a toll and it's something that i think a lot of people even who love these films didn't quite understand fully of what was being said with that when i feel film. like it's a super important part of the story the idea that you know the quest costs him something mm -hmm. the world ahead. it's one of them scenes that can be analyzed day and night for a thousand years yep Mist and shadow. Feels like um more than the sum of its parts. This uh, scenes like this. Cloud and shade. I think so. Definitely, absolutely. I think so. Well, it feels like commentary on war, uh, beyond the film, yep. beyond the story it itself. Symbolism. Denethor just eating like a fucking pig. Meanwhile, all of these men riding out to their needless deaths. Needless deaths. This crazy asshole, yeah. And then when you add on the elements as well, right, of, of Boromir and Faramir as like a, a big motivating element of this happening in the first place. Even Gandalf's sad. He's like, man, that sucks. Yeah, just tragic. Just it's senseless just tragic. death. Uh, Why can he not fight for those he loves? She's talking about herself. It's subtextual. You know as little of war as that hobbit. Well, this is the thing about these movies, is like, you've got this attitude from Eomir that can seem like he's seen mean it. and restrictive and narrow-minded, but then we get like, he ain't fucking lying. He's been there, he knows what yeah, this is. he's yeah. been through it. I mean, we met him, essentially, on a field of dead people. War is the province of men, Eowyn. 
And he's not saying it to be like men, women suck. He's like, no, it sucks that men have to do this. Yeah, you we don't, don't want, want you be, to have to do this. You Consider do yourself it. the lucky one that you don't yeah. have to do this, and we do. It's it's a totally different approach than what we see nowadays, which is yeah, yeah war's awesome and girls war got, awesome they get it done. Girls. It's one of the most interesting things that Ragnarok. Well, I hmm, man, Ragnarok. Does one so of the many thousand interesting, interesting things. things. I don't know if I want to say that. Something that's so cool <laughs> about Ragnarok is that they have the big hype moment of yeah, let's go, and then as soon as the battle begins and the music kicks in, it just creates the vibe of oh this isn't this is war and this is not this is not good nobody wants this, yeah, like this screaming is bad. and the tension in the music for reference he's saying god of war ragnarok not thor ragnarok no not thor ragnarok yeah. i mean again <laughs> i like the joke but now nah, those foundations are gone <laughs> Carl Urban was in Thor Ragnarok. He was. So, <laughs> Thor Ragnarok. He went on an arc. He, he did. Remember when <laughs> he was a good character? He actually had it. Yeah, that's crazy. He gave his life defending people. Defending Asgard. He had that one extremely cool shot where he was wielding Jumped tool machine to M16s yeah. on it. And it was so fucking great. What a great character. And he, and he just showed up for that movie. You he know? introduced it as he got them from Texas. <laughs> <laughs> well, here Texas. comes another amazing scene. Yep, sorry, yep. there's just too many in a row. You would call upon them to fight. They believe in nothing. You know what's cool, though, as well, on theme, Aragorn being like, why the fuck would we use, you know, the ghosts, the traitors, murderers? It's just on theme for Lord of the Rings that you have your path to redemption, even the, the army of the ghosts yeah. sort of well, lines Imagine up how it. horrible <laughs> that curse is. It's, it's, yeah. I mean, it's not as bad as the curse of the Nazgul. It's like, are they still aware that they were once men, but they are just like these autons for Sauron now? Just being trapped in that mountain because you're a bunch of pussies. The war lies to the east. You cannot leave on the eve of battle. You cannot abandon the men. I think the thing that checks them is they're just a one-off. I mean, there, are, are, there are multiple instances throughout this trilogy of characters who brush against or almost become redeemed. You have Smeagol, you have Grima, you have, of course, the ghosts. Bad things have happened. Can you right that road? Well, yeah, and not all of them the, do. They run the um, gamut on that. We get, we get like all the people who do, all the people who like people who don't necessarily, you know, like Theoden. He feels like a lot of what he's doing is redeeming his lack of having been in part to important events or something. It's just like there's no need to feel that way necessarily. But then you have Baromir, who really is making up for a huge mistake. Theoden's also, I mean, it's lack of being a good king and lack of being a good parent. I have missed your joy since first I saw. I guess in a way he would obviously blame himself for what happened with Grima yeah. and Saruman's hold over him. And it's good to see like the results of all these different characters and where they go is some make one decision, some make the other. Yeah. Some, you know, die for it in a good way, some die for it in a bad way. But you, you see that variety and so it's easy to sort of communicate that message of redemption. Have you learned nothing of the stubbornness of dwarves? We're going with you, laddie. But of course, the critical thing being, well, I mean, you gotta, you gotta chase that redemption. You gotta work for it. Yep. It's not something that you can just stumble into. It requires very focused, directed effort. Yeah, you gotta want to change. Yep. It's, it is a difficult thing, and it wouldn't have value if it was an easy thing to do. By its very nature, it might entail a great deal of suffering and strife and, you know, work. And it might kill you, but that might be the it price. It might kill you, which is a super important one with, like, Boromir. It gets him killed. I feel like this is so absent from so many films, the acknowledgement of the cost of these, these victories. No! Oh, this scene is fucking amazing. That man is... Carl Urban giving it all he's got. That moment gives way more context to what he was saying to it earlier. 